Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a geometry puzzle. If you like this video, please comment, like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button for notifications. If you don't like the video, let me know in the comment section down below. I appreciate all kinds of feedback. And let's get started. So, we do have a square with side length x, which is inscribed in the circular segment as shown. So it's as if it's uh, on an inclined plane, sort of. An angle SYB measures alpha, find x in terms of alpha. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to find the side length for the square in terms of the angle alpha. So this is alpha. And let's go ahead and make some connections. So what is the plan? Well, the uh, size of the square is not uh, parallel to the diameter. So it's a little different situation, but we're going to handle this. So what are we going to do first? The first connection that we're going to be making is going to be from the center of the semicircle, okay, to one of the vertices of the square like this. Okay, we're going to go like this. And then we're going to be making obviously another um, connection, which is going to be right through the middle. And of course, this is going to help us a great deal, right? Because as you know, this is going to be perpendicular, right? Okay, awesome. So this is going to be a right angle. And why is that? Because if you think about it, you have a cord, right? And you're basically connecting the center to the cord. And that center, that segment that connects the center to the cord is going to be perpendicular as long as it's going through the midpoint. Now, why is that point going through the midpoint, the line? Because of symmetry. If you think about it, there's only one way to inscribe a square in a circular segment, and that has to be perfectly right in the middle. Okay, hopefully this makes sense. Let's proceed. Now, since I'm trying to find the side length for the square, which is x, uh, this is going to be x, this is going to be x, and this is going to be half of x, but that's not what I need. I need this one. This is going to be x over 2. Now, we're not completely done yet, and of course, we already mentioned that this is going to be a 90 degree angle as well. So we can safely say that the base of the square is basically um, parallel to the top, right? So they're basically two parallel segments, in other words, and anything that is perpendicular to one side of the square is going to be also perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay, so that's well established. What are we going to do here? How do we use alpha? Because what we need to do here is basically we need to associate alpha with x, right? So we need to find some type of relationship. And for that purpose, we're going to use the radius of this circle. And I think we forgot to mention that in the problem statement, right? Okay, I apologize for that. I forgot to mention that this is a semicircle with radius 1. Okay, so the radius of the semicircle is 1. But what would happen if it was r? Well, then r would also be involved in this equation. Okay, but the radius is 1. I was supposed to write that. I forgot, and I'm sorry about that. So, let's proceed. Since the radius is 1, what am I getting from there? Well, this is also 1 because yb is a radius. And we have a right triangle here that includes alpha. Therefore, this opposite side, since sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse and hypotenuse equals 1, kind of like a unit circle sort of, right? This length here is going to be sine alpha, right? Okay. Which length am I talking about? From this point to the center. Awesome. With, in other words, which is that's the opposite side. Okay, fine. But I still need to associate alpha and x. So what am I supposed to do next? Well... This is also x, right? Because that's one parallel to the sides of the square. So now we do have a right triangle. Do you see that? Okay, this is the right triangle that I will be using. Okay, so you know that in most of almost all the puzzles we use the Pythagorean theorem and this is no different from the other ones. So let's go ahead and proceed. Okay, now I'm going to write the Pythagorean theorem. It's going to look like this. I have x plus sine alpha right, which is going to be kind of like the height of my right triangle, and the base is x over 2, so this is squared 
plus x over 2 squared. And the hypotenuse in this case is equal to what, right? That's another question. Well, this is a point on the circle and this is the center of the circle. Therefore, the distance between those two points is going to be the radius, which is 1. Okay, awesome. So this is equal to 1, 1 squared, but that's 1. So now our goal is to find x. Let's go ahead and try to find x from here. Uh, let's go ahead and expand it. Uh, we'll get x squared plus 2 sine alpha multiplied by x plus sine squared alpha plus x squared over 4, which is equal to 1. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to solve for x. Remember that because we're trying to find x in terms of alpha. And to do that, we have to kind of combine like terms and then solve this equation for x. How do we do that? So let's go ahead and combine x squared and x squared plus 4. That's going to give me 5x squared over 4. And then I have 2 sine alpha. And let me put that in parentheses so you can see better what I'm talking about. Plus, now, I have sine squared alpha minus 1. So let me go ahead and bring that over here. Now, you're probably thinking about what I'm thinking. 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared, so we can replace this with negative cosine squared, but that's not necessary. Let's leave it as is, because I think it's better that way. And at the end of the problem, we're actually going to talk about some special cases, which it would be good if we kept the sine alpha as sine alpha. Okay, cool. Now, what am I going to do here? I do have an equation that seems to have two variables, but the idea is solving for x in terms of alpha, so we're going to treat alpha uh, as a constant in this case, because we're trying to solve for x, right? Obviously, if uh, alpha varies, x varies, so because they can be expressed in terms of the other one. Um, if they asked us to express alpha in terms of x, that would be another question. We could do that as well. Okay, anyways, so how do you solve for x? It's a quadratic equation, so we are, we're going to use the quadratic formula. But before we use that, let me go ahead and multiply everything by four because um, it looks better that way, I think. Okay, if I multiply everything by four, I get five x squared. And then when I multiply this by four, eight sine alpha multiplied by x plus everything multiplied by four, four sine squared alpha minus four is equal to zero. Awesome. Now, what we're gonna do here is solve for x using the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and set it up. x equals negative b, and obviously one thing that you need to remember is that we're going to be getting negative 4 cosine squared here. So cosine squared is always positive, negative 4 cosine squared is negative. So from Vieta's formulas, we know that the product of the roots is negative, which means one of the roots is going to be negative and we don't want that. So we're going to go with the positive root. Needless to say, we don't have to write two roots. So negative b is going to be negative 8 sine alpha. Plus, again, I'm ignoring the negative 1, square root of b squared, that's going to be 64 sine squared alpha, minus 4ac. 4 times a is 20, so that's going to be 20 times c, which is 4 sine squared alpha minus 4. Awesome. This whole thing, and then divided by 2a, which is 10. Beautiful. Now, what I'd like to do next is simplify this as much as I can and then find my x value. So, if you simplify this, you should be getting negative 8 sine alpha. And if you expand it, you're going to get 16, 64 sine squared alpha minus 80, which gives you negative 16. So, and then from there, 24 times, 20 times 4 is going to give us 80. So, we get 80 minus 16 sine squared alpha divided by 10. And what I can do here is I can basically take out a 16 here, which is going to be when square rooted, it's going to be like 4. So we can take out a 4 here. And everything is divided by 16. So it's going to be 5 minus sine squared alpha. And obviously, in this equation, we can go ahead and divide everything by 2 to simplify a little bit. And I want to write the positive term first. So it's going to look like 2 times the square root of 5 minus sine squared alpha minus 4 sine alpha over 5. And that's going to be the solution for x. So in other words, we were trying to solve x uh, for x, and our goal was to find x in terms of alpha, and we did. Now, 
Let's consider our equation again. Now, I wanna say something, and for that purpose, I guess I'm just gonna draw a little quick sketch here because I don't feel like going back, and hopefully we can handle this, right? So something like this, you know, hopefully it'll do, hand-drawn picture, okay? So what I'd like to say here is this is alpha, right? And this is x. So what I did was basically find x in terms of alpha, which means that if alpha varies, then I can find the different values of x. For example, what happens if alpha is equal to 30 degrees? Nice. So if you go ahead and plug it in, you're going to get sine alpha is going to be obviously one half, right? So from here, you should be getting something like this. Uh, sine squared alpha is gonna be one fourth, five minus one fourth is gonna be 19 fourths. If you square root that, you're gonna get square root of 19 divided by two, which is gonna cancel out with the other two, so you're gonna get square root of 19 from there, minus four times one half is equal to two, divided by five. Okay, so this is one of the values that we will be getting. Actually, this was my original plan. I was gonna, I set it up this way, and actually the figure is drawn that way too, you probably noticed. Uh, but then I thought about it like, okay, this puzzle is still easy and it's kind of too easy, I think. Maybe to make it more interesting, I, wanna, I wanted to spice it up a little bit and made it more general. But this is cool because now you can find it for all values of alpha. And I also tested out of curiosity, and what would happen if alpha is equal to zero degrees, right? Then our little line, inclined plane, is gonna be actually coinciding with the base, which is the diameter. And in that case, you should be getting, let's find out what it is, right? What is sine zero? Sine alpha is equal to zero, obviously, right? So if you plug in zero, that will be fairly easy. You should be getting two times the square root of five minus zero divided by five. Now, where does this come from? Well, if you think about this case where you have basically a square like this, right? And then what's gonna happen is that the radius is one. So if you call this A and this one is gonna be two A, and the hypotenuse from Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus four a squared is gonna be one, five a squared is gonna be one, and a is gonna be root five over five. But we're looking for two a, side length of the square, and that is just going to be two times root five over five. So this basically just shows you some special cases, which is kind of interesting. If alpha is 45, you can find it. If alpha is 75 degrees, what happens if alpha is 90 degrees? Of course, that's another story. You're gonna get a tangent line so on and so forth. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for uh, watching and I'll see you in the next video tomorrow and that's going to be an algebraic problem. And until then, take care, bye-bye.